Hello everyone, Gareth the Master 974 here again today doing another Valve Source Code tutorial. Today what I'm going to do is go over how to fix burst fire functionality for weapons in the Source Engine. Now thankfully the code is already included so all we need to do is make some changes and then we're in a position to utilise weapons that fire free rounds. So what you want to do is navigate to your source code directory and open up the game solution because, you know, I haven't mentioned that over the past couple of tutorials that you have to do that. But don't mind me loading up Visual Studio 2019. The only reason for that is, well, Visual Studio 2013 is giving me grief and that could lead into a different source code tutorial. And one thing that you may want to investigate is the weapon underscore SMG1 code. What you'll find out is that Weapon SMG1, which is the submachine gun in Half-Life 2, actually derives from CHL Select Fire Machine Gun, which is responsible for burst fire code. And so technically speaking, you can turn this into a burst fire weapon by adding something like M underscore I fire mode equals fire mode underscore free rain burst. And uh, at this point, if you just build the solution, we can understand what's going on. And so for the submachine gun, there's three weapon animations that play, but only one bullet fires and only one bullet is taken out of the magazine, which is obviously broken. So if we look into CHL Select Fire Machine Gun as a class, we can see that it's defined in base HL combat weapon dot H with the code being in base HL combat weapon dot CPP. So if we go into base HL combat weapon dot CPP, then what we can find in the select fire machine gun code is with the burst firing in primary attack, it calls a function called burst think. And inside burst think, it actually calls CHR machine guns primary attack code. So that's where we're going to have to go to figure out what's going on with this burst fire issue. And so what we'll find is there's a line that says I bullets to fire. And it's set to zero initially, and the idea is that it gets set to one, but it only gets set to one one time. So in the context of a free rain burst, it's going one zero zero one zero zero when it's supposed to be one 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 one. So obviously that's not correct. And my solution here is to just change m underscore i clip one minus equals i bullets to fire to m underscore i clip one minus equals one that's just c plus plus terminology to say the amount of ammo in clip one is the current amount of ammo in clip one minus one and then also change info dot m underscore i shots equals one that way every time we execute this code we're going to fire one bullet and it's going to take one ammo out of the magazine so if you build the solution at this point, then the free round burst is fixed. However, from my investigation, for example, modifying the SMG1 to have a vector cone of 20 degrees, which is actually quite large, you can see that two bullets look as if they fire into the same space, which doesn't look right. So bullets one and three fire in pretty much the same position. And for me, that's not accurate i mean you can tell me if i'm wrong on that but i think that's not right what i would want is three distinct bullet holes which means the bullets end up firing into three different points so what we can do is create a vector called vex spread above the fire bullets info underscore t section and just set that vex spread vector to be equal to p player then arrow get attack spread and in brackets this it's basically the same line that is currently in info.m underscore vex spread. Then after this, we want to do float, and I'm calling it rand float, short for random float. And this is just going to be equal to vex spread dot x. And so if I was to look into, for example, vector cone 20 degrees, look at the definition of it, then you can see it's a vector and the x, y and z components are all equal to the same number. In that case, 0.17365. So really you can use vex spread dot x, y or z for this float because they're the same number. But then what we're going to do is create another vector called spread to use and set this to be equal to a random vector and then in brackets minus rand float and positive rand float. And so effectively what this is going to do is create a randomized vector 
that's going to be within the bounds of the vector cone x degrees. So in this case, it's vector cone 20 degrees. So every time the HR machine gun primary attack code is going to be executed, this random vector code is going to execute. And so in theory, it means that every time we go through a burst, every time primary attack is called, this vector changes. So we get three different positions. And then we want to replace info.m underscore vec spread to spread to use and then build the solution. Now, one thing I also do is import the SMG2 code, which is actually provided by Valve. So you just add existing code and find weapon SMG2 and then add in the stub weapon class on the client side in C underscore weapon underscore underscore stubs underscore HL2. I'm not going to go over that in detail because I already assume you know how to do that. But on top of the SMG2, there's a Half-Life 2 beta HMG1, but the code is not included with, you know, the source code distribution that you can end up getting. So you have to get the code from the leak code. And I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to get into view models and importing materials, sounds, scripts. I assume that's something you already know how to do. But there's the possibility that I can do a follow-up hammer tutorial to go into issues you might have with importing models from Half-Life 2 Beta into your mod, especially in terms of view models and muzzle flash errors and weapon animation errors and stuff like that. But that's not for today's tutorial. I just throw that in there because the SMG2 is actually going to be useful for what I'm going to get into later. Anyway, the code seems to work. Three bullets fire into three different positions. However, there is a bug where you can reload during a burst. And so while the burst is going on, a reload sound plays and actually reloads the magazine. And so you don't really want that to happen. And so in this case, we're going to go to base HL combat weapon dot H. And in both CHL machine gun and CHL select fire machine gun classes, we're going to add a virtual ball called reload and that's going to pass through void inputs. Now from my investigation virtual means that it's going to define a function that can be inherited and or overwritten. Don't know about that don't quote me but the overwritten and inherited part of it seems like something that we want to use. And so some points in base HL combat weapon dot CPP in the CHL machine gun code you want to add in a function that goes something like this ball chr machine gun colon colon reload and then create a ball called is reload allowed which is equal to base class reload then if is reload allowed is true then weapon sound reload to play the weapon reload sound and then return base class reload else return false so what this does is it checks to make sure we can reload and if we can we want to play the reload sounds and then actually reload the weapon otherwise if we're not in a position to reload then we don't do anything and then in the chl select fire machine gun code we want to do something similar uh, we just want to do ball chl select fire machine gun colon colon reload and then if m underscore i burst size is greater than zero then return false else return base class colon colon reload so all that code is saying is if our burst size is anything other than zero then don't reload don't allow the player to reload but if burst size is zero then we can reload if we can actually reload and then because the base class of chl select fire machine gun is chl machine gun it's going to run into the code that we just would have wrote in the CHR machine gun section, which means plays a reload weapon sound. And so now if you build the solution, you can see that now you cannot interrupt a burst with a reload. However, for the SMG1, the bug still exists because the reload function isn't being called in this capacity because it's been overwritten in the SMG1 code. But for the SMG2, it would work perfectly fine because there's no reloads defined in the weapon SMG2 code. And so there's a relatively simple fix I'll show for the SMG1 code to do what you want to do if you're using the SMG1 in this case. However, now we get into a situation where if we only have one or two bullets left in the magazine, then only one single shot sound plays, which is not what you want to do. You either want one shot to play for one bullet and two shots for two bullets 
but only one shot sound plays in both cases. So how can we resolve this? Well, we can either try and establish a way we're using the existing code to enter a loop, in which case the single shot sounds play for the number of bullets that's left in the magazine, which for my experimentation you couldn't really do because the weapon sound function only gets called one time, yet you want it to play a sound two times, so you're going to end up with some issues. Or we can just create a new sound. So we're going to change m underscore iclip1 less than m underscore iburst size to m underscore iclip1 equals equals 1. And then after this condition, we want to add else if m underscore iclip1 equals equals 2, then base class, weapon sounds, special 3, and sound time. Now, the reason I choose special 3 is that it's a sound that isn't usually played. So we can use it without causing any conflicts or any issues. But we have to define special 3 in the weapon script for the SMG1 or the SMG2 and also add that sound into gamesoundsweapons.txt. Now you may need to get the code for the SMG1 or the SMG2 or gamesoundsweapons.txt because it's not going to be in your mod. So my recommendation would be to go to your Source SDK 2013 single player install location and then go to HL2 and scripts. You should find the weapon script there. For the case of the SMG2, you'd go to the Half-Life 2 beta installation and just copy that over. Uh, and then, for example, in weapon SMG1, we're going to add in special 3. And then, for example, weapon underscore SMG1 dot special 3 in the same data section. But now we need to actually define what weapon underscore SMG1 dot special 3 is. That's where we're going to game sounds weapons dot text and add in something like weapon underscore SMG1 dot special 3. Channel is chan weapon. Volume is 0 0.7. Sound level is sound level gunfire. Pitch is 98 and 105. And the wave is going to point to weapons SMG1 and SMG1 underscore fireburst 2 dot wave. Now you can also fix weapon underscore SMG1 dot burst because currently it's only playing a single shot sound. You just replace the burst wave to SMG1 underscore fireburst 1 dot wave, which is the free range burst for the SMG1, which actually exists. However, what we've defined for weapon underscore SMG1 dot special 3 doesn't exist, so we have to make it. So I'm going to use FL Studio and I'm just going to very briefly outline the process, but I'm using the SMG2 sounds because that's an easier example to use. Um, and you just want to load in two audio clips, one which has the full burst fire free round sound, and the other audio clip is for just a single shot sound. Then you want to drag the clips into the playlist and then zoom in or hold alt to be able to move the single shots so that the waveforms align with the free round burst shots so you only create two instances of the single shot sound but they overlap with the free round burst sound and then get rid of the free round burst sound you have a two round burst sound switch to song at the top of the application listen to it and then when you're happy do export wave Name it and save it to the destination that you specified in the game sounds weapons.txt file. And with all that being said and done, build the Visual Studio solution and test. And everything should work as intended. The free round burst functionality works, the bullets hit at different points, you can't interrupt the burst with a reload, and the one and two bullet burst sounds play as they're supposed to. And that's everything that I can think of that would fix the burst fire weapon functionality in your source mod. So I hope you found this helpful and let me know what you think. Peace out, take care and see you for the next video.